let's say you're a millennial or zoomer with, I don't know, about $50,000 in student loan debt. Now, you have two choices when dealing with this. Either pay it off like everyone else over time, or chip away at it during your time in college and set aside any extra money for your eventual retirement. If you fall into the second group, you may like fire. No, not that fire. The financial independence, retire early movement, or fire movement for short, is a relatively new subculture. And while it is an appealing movement, and you may want to join even before I get done with this sentence, it does have its drawbacks. But before we touch on any of this, hey yo, Polly, bring on the title card! The story will continue after this. One of the first works of fire culture was in 1992 with Vicky Robinson and Joe Dominguez's Your Money or Your Life, a book about financial self-reliance. Fire has been interchangeably compared to both the minimalist and simple living lifestyle choices since its inception. There was a small wave of fire followers around the term millennial, but more of its adherents are millennial and some Gen X. The current wave was created more out of the ashes of the 2008 global recession and the 2020 economic crisis. And with events like that, and the uncertainty of the market some days, I can understand where they're coming from. Tanya Hester, a member of the fire community, describes it as so. Financial independence ultimately means that you can shape your life without taking money into consideration. That's considerably reasonable, especially in this day and age when inflation has snuck up on us faster than the amount of papier marks required to build a house about a century earlier. Much like any good group, fire has rules. The ten pillars of financial independence. And looking these over, they seem to apply more towards an American audience, but can be used for anyone in the world if you really want to follow along at home. Lower your housing cost. Drive used cars. Cut the cable cord. Lower your tax liability by maxing out your tax-deferred vehicles such as your 401k, 457, 403b, IRA, HSA, and all the others. Switch to a cheaper cell phone plan. Use credit card rewards and smart financial habits to fund your travel. Reduce your grocery bills. Increase your income and consider adding multiple income streams, also known as side hustles. Invest via low-cost index funds. Use the 4% rule, the ultimate equation behind achieving financial independence. When you can safely withdraw 4% from your nest egg each year to cover your expenses and still have enough money down the road, you've reached financial independence. Ugh. Wow, I just got flashbacks to my management courses with that segment. Anyway, who are the people who do this? And do they have any techniques for us to steal or borrow? Fire is a concept that you can start at any time. However, many writers and spokespeople for the subject advise against outright quitting your job. People like Hester recommend finding either a different job or a whole new career path if you feel yours is life-sucking. Mr. Money Mustache, a Canadian blogger and former software engineer, is a very prominent member of FIRE. Currently living in the U.S., he retired at the age of 30 and has decided to live a simpler life, cooking his own meals and cycling to work. And all of that amounted to him enjoying a nice retirement 17 years ago. Here's a quote from his own website that explains a lot of the reasoning behind the FIRE community. People are living ridiculously expensive lifestyles while thinking they were completely normal, and then being baffled when they had no money left over to buy their own freedom. And he's not alone in this idea. The entire FIRE subculture is based off of the same idea that wasting your money will only bring you happiness in the moment. Jacob Fusker, a 46-year-old retired physicist from Chicago, also published some works on the concept. Early Retirement Extreme came out in 2010, and also coincides with a blog run by Fusker. He worked with the same ideas as Mr. Mustache. Both of them live frugally, and both of them believe their savings can last them for the rest of their lives thanks to smart investing. And while these two lads are the prominent voices of a movement that has been in the works since the 1990s, some other facets of the community exist as well. Like many communities these days, there are online forums, subreddits, and even groups on most social media platforms who talk about questions and lifestyle variations associated with FIRE. You can also find people talking about this lifestyle on YouTube. Many of them are just the average person, but they have delved into the movement and would like to teach you about it. Probably more than I ever could. There's even a fire dating site where you can meet other people who will help you evade taxes and skip the bill on dining out. 
Of course, it is a bit of a shame if I don't tell you how to achieve fire in this video. And I see you there, pressing your face up against the screen. So how do you achieve fire? Why do I always be that one guy that goes, use a lighter, duh. It's a lot harder, but only with two words. Financial discipline. Three, two, one, it's jam. One British follower of the fire movement relocated from London to Manchester and lives in a shared apartment. He cycles to work and puts aside 50% of his salary each year. Another invested in almost anything he could and withheld himself from purchases of frivolous things like designer clothes and cars, and instead looked for everything simple. He retired in his late 30s. In 2010, a postgraduate student picked up a copy of Robin's book and amassed a fortune of nearly one million five years later. He followed the ideas of low expense living and diversified investments. These either sound too good to be true or too frugal to work, don't they? Well, so many achieved this by living below their means, which is something you should try to do even if you aren't in fire, if possible, just to have a little bit of extra money for an emergency or something special. Both Hester and writer Deacon Hayes agree that fire isn't for those wanting to get rich quick yellowing their money at index funds either. Fire is more akin to a discipline. It's all like Buddhism or military training. Meaning that you have to have something I never will. Self-control. There's even some math to do this. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not going to read that. It's just going to sit there. I'm terrible at math. Now, you may think that even when you do have your Scrooge McDuck-esque mountain of money 20 to 30 years from now, it's free game on how you spend it. But that's not the case. It should be treated just the same as your paychecks, and that's because of another rule a lot of the community follow. The Bengen Rule. Also known as the 4% Rule. That tenth pillar. But there are some variations on this, made especially for those of you who prefer diet water. Fat fire is where one takes out more of their savings account compared to the normal fire. It leads to you having more spending money for that time, with the eventual drawback of running out of said money faster. Lean fire is more like minimalism, wherein you take out a smaller percentage of your portfolio to cover living expenses for a year. It has the advantage of letting the same amount of money last longer, but at the cost of putting a damper on your quality of life. Now, minimalism itself is another subculture, one I have on my big list anyway, so I won't go too much into detail on this part, but it almost goes hand in hand with the concepts and disciplines of fire. Minimalism, or simple living as it's otherwise known, is the idea of living with very few things. It's more of an anti-consumerism idea that focuses on living with only the essential. Now, while fire does this as well, it also has some allotments for fruitless spending, but that depends more on the type of fire you use. Parroting what a lot of companies have said in the last few years, in these uncertain times. We look to make sure that ourselves and those we love are not going to face hardships. Something you can see with this Maslow Pyramid right here. And we only want what's best for the future. It's why people always want more. A sort of subconscious and animalistic desire to protect them and theirs. It's why some people are greedy and others are overly frugal. They are only wanting to ensure no financial incident can ruin anyone in their immediate family circle. Others seek financial independence. The first two parts of this movement wanting to wipe away debt and never accrue any more. These people are more common from what I've seen in the fire movement, and even then, it's mostly college graduates and the millennial and zoomer generations. That being said, you may be a college graduate with a lot of debt, and now you may want to join fire, but there are some issues. One large concern of the movement is that it is biased towards the tech sector, meaning that high-paying jobs working for Silicon Valley firms allow for these people to gather more money quickly and greatly propel them along the fire model. You know those people I had as examples? A good chunk of them are in STEM fields. Statistically, STEM fields make more yearly than what the average American brings home. Living wage is another issue. 13.4% of Americans are living below the poverty line, many of them living from paycheck to paycheck, rarely finding time to save that extra dollar or two. Not to mention that with these high-paying jobs that many fire proponents hold, it goes to show that one must be looking at specialized degrees or live like a Buddhist to float by without returning to the rat race of corporate monotony. Contrary to this, fire proponents do say that the techniques and methods are more for the lower classes to use, and that they just haven't updated their lifestyles to flow easily into the template presented to them. Another issue is the problem that fire could be ruining our economy. Economics Explained does have a good video on this topic, and he goes more into the monetary and economic definitions and consequences of the movement, so I'll try and sum up a few of his criticisms here, but do watch that video if you are interested in the subject. In the short term, if everyone followed the fire movement, it would be bad for the economy. However, in the long term, it'd be good. Why is that? I don't really know. I am terrible at explaining economics. So I'll just leave this little typed bit. I'm not going to read it. It's probably written a lot better in this script. Of course, once you have achieved financial independence, you get to see everyone else suffer. Especially if our future robot overlords. We're doomed to be outsourced anyway. Yeah. Thanks for watching.
Okay, I gotta end this on a lighter note. Otherwise, the algorithm will drop my videos. Financial independence is a choice for each individual to make. Fine. If you like sitting at home and eating pizza rolls in your underwear, and probably have some extra cash, it might be for you. If you consider yourself financially stable and could coast on your current retirement account, don't worry about this. See it as a fun video on the internet. If you're somewhere in between, you can think for yourself on this one. And again, I want to clarify one thing before this video is over. Do not take advice from a raccoon on the internet. I am not a financial advisor. I feel most of my business is free. Unless, of course, uh, advice is about finding good food that was just thrown out. Now, for those of you still interested in financial stuff, I've left a few links in the description if you'd like to look in the fire. Well, with that out of the way, let's actually get this episode over with.